I suppose my abiding memories of my mum is of long country walks, my mum and dad and my little brother, and also of the small little briberies. At the end of the walk, there'd be ice cream at the end of that walk. I was born in West Sussex, and my earliest memories are of living on the council estate along the coast, west of Brighton. My parents were really humble people and hard working, working class really, but we definitely were brought up to appreciate what we had. My mum was a real justice warrior and really fearless in staying true to her principles. When we found out that my mum's legacy, a substantial part of it was to go to Oxfam, we weren't at all surprised. I don't think I even queried that it was the right choice really. It was a lot to do with our upbringing and my mum's worldview with climate change and um, ecological breakdown and the pandemic recently. We understand even more that we are living in a global society. Aside from the obvious moral argument, there was the economic argument. I think it was a really astute investment my mother made, really. So, for example, the two projects that my mum's legacy went to was one in Liberia and one in Cambodia, both of which were water and sanitation projects. In Liberia, 1,550 people now have access to public and home toilets. And that more than 10,000 people had access to education on hygiene practices. These projects obviously have a ripple effect on the community in terms of health, of course, education, women's lives, and the ability to set up their own businesses. Because of the integrity of an NGO such as Oxfam, with such an established track record, I could be definitely sure that the money would go so much further. By leaving a legacy to Oxfam, I feel now is one of the most impactful ways you can influence change directly 